This is Ratan Bose speaking to Indians in East Asia. My countrymen in East Asia, while I am in Tokyo, I desire to address a few words to you and I have no doubt that you will give them due consideration. In the first place, I desire to thank you most heartily for the warm and enthusiastic welcome that you have given me on the occasion of my public appearance in East Asia. And for the assurance that you have given me of your wholehearted support to our efforts to liberate our dear motherland. I feel overwhelmed at this manifestation of your burning patriotism and spirit of sacrifice. I have received numerous telegraphic and postal messages from you direct, while other messages I have read in the press. And all these messages have given me great joy and satisfaction. You know that I am always an optimist. Nevertheless, I must say that the response that I have received has exceeded my fondest expectations. I can only say in reply that I feel proud of you. Since the outbreak of the war in Europe and in East Asia, I have been saying repeatedly that we, the Indian people, could not have wished or even dreamt of a better combination of circumstances for helping us to achieve our liberty. When the world forces are helping us in this way, our task has automatically become very much easier than what it would have been otherwise. This fact should further strengthen our self-confidence and optimism and hearten us considerably in the fight that lies ahead of us. I am overjoyed to see that you have already realized that the responsibility of winning freedom does not rest merely on the shoulders of our countrymen at home. It is but natural that they should bear the brunt of the burden and they have been doing so already. But at the same time, every Indian, no matter where he may be living at the present time, has a duty towards his country and he must contribute his due share towards the final victory. I am convinced that India cannot hope to be free until all Indians living abroad perform their duty in this momentous world crisis. Owing to the fact that the three party powers have been giving their fullest support to Indian independence, it is comparatively easy for Indians living in Axis countries or in countries controlled by the Axis powers to play their part in the national struggle. Consequently, among those Indians who are now abroad, I expect that Indians living in Axis countries or in countries controlled by the Axis powers will render the maximum service to their motherland. Here in East Asia, you have seen for yourself how deep is the interest in and sympathy for Indian independence. The readiness of the Imperial Japanese government and nation to render us any assistance in our national struggle that we may need has naturally lightened our task to a considerable degree. Consequently, there can be no possible excuse why any Indian in East Asia should not pull his whole weight in the present struggle. But though the Axis powers and Japan in particular are prepared to help us at any time and have been actually doing so already, the task of liberating India is ours and ours alone. That responsibility we shall not cast on anybody else because that would be against our national honor. Moreover, we have no right to ask for or expect help from any quarter until we ourselves have first of all done our very utmost. Our countrymen and our sisters and brothers at home have been doing their best in the circumstances in which they are placed. But the enemy is ruthless and desperate and he is armed to the teeth. Against such a brutal foe, no amount of civil disobedience or of sabotage or of revolutionary terrorism can be of any avail. If therefore we want to expel British power from India, we have to fight the enemy 
with its own weapons. 